Amen. Well, I have been blessed. Have you? Amen. Thank you. I didn't get to see. Did, did Michelle and Igor bring their, their puppy in? I didn't get to see it. But uh, I was sad. I was wanting to catch some of that children's story because I was excited about I, she, We had talked about what she was going to do, so I know that was a treat for you guys. And I thought, okay, in the theme, in the theme of animals today, that I would share with you a little bit about the tale of the Woody's dogs. So we're going to go down. We're going to show you a little bit and tell you, talk to you a little bit about the Woody's dogs. Now, see, I did not grow up with animals in my house. I did not grow up with animals outside of my house. My dad was an evangelist. We moved a lot, so we weren't able. I think I had a pet turtle at one time. Uh, we had some pet ducklings at one time, but that was it. And so when I married my husband, um, you know, we had kind of talked about animals, but, you know, I just don't like them in my house. And uh, once we had kids and then we had, you know, we had Sydney and Skye, we knew that we probably should get a dog. And plus, Sydney is just, if you know Sydney, she loves animals. She's, she's going to be a vet someday. And so we're like, okay, we, we, better, get, we better get a dog or something. Um, so our first dog... Okay, is this not working? Hello. Do I do the up button or the... Yeah, the down button. Um, oh, there he is. This is Simon, little German Shepherd. He was our first dog, and uh, we got him when we were here in Monroe. This was actually at the pumpkin patch out there, and... Um, yeah, he, he was the cutest little puppy. Now, when Simon got old, now, German, who's had a German Shepherd in here? Okay. Extremely smart dogs. So intelligent, which can kind of be a pain for you. Because you got to keep them occupied. They're working dogs. And, you know, you got to uh, give them a lot of attention and give them, a, give them a job. Well, his job became the ball. That's all he wanted to do. He'd come, drop the slobber-filled, nasty ball at your feet, and then you were to pick it up and throw it. And he could do this for hours and hours. And I mean, that's all he ever wanted to do. In fact, sometimes we got so tired of it, we'd put his ball up where he couldn't see it, and we would, we'd hope he'd get distracted, and he wouldn't go to the ball so, and drop it, you know, drop this lovely, and you, you didn't matter what shoes you're wearing, your Sabbath shoes, whatever shoes, he'd drop it at your feet to throw the ball. Some of you guys may remember Simon. Um, and he wasn't aggressive at all for a German Shepherd. In fact, there's only two times I, I really, in fact, when I was really scared and there was a crazy, I thought there was a crazy man at my house. The crazy man gave him Kung Pao, Kung Pao chicken. And he was, he was eating his Kung Pao ch chicken instead of, you know, rescuing me from crazy man. Um, but the only times that I saw him a little aggressive is one time my uncle came over and he hadn't met Simon yet. And he saw Sydney and he went to go grab Sydney to say hello. And Simon did not appreciate that at all. And he didn't bite him or anything, but he gave him a really good bark and told him, you know, who was boss. And then one time our neighbor, and we lived way out in the woods, and we had neighbors. I know it was crazy, but we actually did. And this little boy came riding on his bike, but he had his hood over his head. And he came riding on his bike, and Simon literally chased that boy up into the girl's playhouse. So the, guy, so the boy is in the playhouse, and Simon is just kind of, pacing at the bottom. And so the girls come running in the house going, mommy, mommy, you got to say, I can't remember what his name was, but you got to save so-and-so. He's up in our playhouse and Simon won't let him down. So I had to go and rescue the boy. Anyway, but that was Simon. He was a very sweet, um, sweet dog. I believe we gave him to Bill Marlowe. Uh, Bill Marlowe took him when we had, when we moved to the academy and we literally were in an apartment and, uh, didn't have room for a German Shepherd who was used to acres just roaming around. Well, wh while we had Simon, um, we got Grace with another dog. In fact, um, Pages, a lot of us know the Page family. Bill Page needed some place to put Sonny, their family dog. And so Sonny joined us. There we are. Those are the girls. That's little baby Sky and Sydney. 
And uh, this is Sonny. And we, I don't know what Sonny was. Sonny was a mix. Um, but he just blended in really beautifully with our family. Him and Simon became the best of friends. Simon was a much happier dog when Sonny came along. And um, they, would, they would roam around together. What was amazing about this dog, he was, he was a little bit more aggressive than Simon was. We felt a little bit more protected with him. And Skye was about this age. And Sonny had uh, had, had a... He had gotten into something. We don't know what it was. But he had a really bad uh, um, gash in his back. And we went and we got it, you know, taken care of. But he was super sore. You know, he had, it was all shaved and they had his stitches. Well, he would let, you know, he would always let Sky at this age be real close to him and, you know, torture him. And he was sitting next to, Son she was sitting next to Sonny. And she was, trying to, she was trying to pull herself up, and she grabbed right a hold of his incision and, you, and then pulled herself up. Do you know what this dog did? Now, if that was me, I probably would have smacked her across the room. This dog just goes, woof, just like that. He looked at her, and he just went, woof, the most gentle bark. And I could not believe the way that dog reacted. It's like he knew. <laughs> it's like he knew. One, she didn't mean it. Two, she was a baby. He couldn't be aggressive with her, but he wanted her to know, don't do it again. Right? It was amazing. I was so impressed with Sonny. Now, Sonny could drool like no other dog. Ha I'm sorry. That dog could drool. Um, I didn't appreciate that. But I appreciated everything else about Sonny. Sonny was a, a wonderful dog. And now we are to our dog now. This is Tracker. Uh, we got Tracker. He's a bloodhound. He does not look like that now. Um, he's still cute. But he, Justin, how we found a bloodhound in Washington, I don't know. Every, he stops traffic wherever we go. When we're walking on the trails and we take him to the dog park, everyone is fascinated with Tracker because you just don't see many, you know, full, uh, full bred bloodhounds here. And so. Uh, tra I, we got a bloodhound because I said, oh, bloodhounds are great. They just lay around. They just lay around like the movies. So I thought this will be perfect. No. You know, and if anyone knows me, you know, I was, so uh, let me just give a piece of advice. When you're looking at buying a dog, read the manual before you buy the dog. We read the manual of bloodhounds after we had already purchased Tracker. Um, and we found out, okay, that they have a natural, a natural smell to them. That even when you give them a bath, they're, they smell good for about 24 hours. That's it. Okay? Everything that I despise about dogs, this dog has. The smell, he drools, he shakes, he sheds. Okay? And so I was like, Wah! and they grow very fast. Like when I took him to puppy school, he was bigger than all the puppies in puppy school. So he would want to play with the poor little puppies, but he'd like pummel them. And, and the teachers would like look at me. I'm like, I'm sorry. He's a bloodhound. Anyway, so, uh, but he, so he did not, he did not lay around. He was very active, but he's a good, good, he is a, he's a sweet dog. And he's now, um, He's now getting older, so he's starting to sleep more, and he's starting to sleep more, and he's starting to get into that. But that doesn't happen until way later, people, so just know. All right, that doesn't happen until they're, they're way older. Uh, but he's a good dog. He's a loyal dog. He's a sweet dog. He, when I go walking with him and me, just him and me, um, he's always good about he doesn't like to be on the leash. If we're at a place where he doesn't have to be on the leash, he'll go ahead of me, but he'll stop, and he'll wait. He'll look back. He'll make sure um, I'm in his eyesight, and he'll, and, you know, he'll come back to me. Um, he's very good. He, very, he knows when it's just me and him. He, he behaves a little differently. Um, I've noticed like when it's the whole family going, he, you know, he feels like he can be a little bit more freer. But Tracker is a good dog. He, um, he's gotten very, you know, in his, old, in his older years, we don't know what's going on. He's getting a little, got some anxiety. So I'm now letting him, because he's an outside dog and he comes, he used to come in the laundry room to sleep. Um, but I'm now letting him kind of come up to Sydney's room to sleep because he's having anxiety issues. Whatever. I think this dog completely knows what he's doing. 
But I figured, well, he's getting old. Let his last years be in happiness. Um, so all of these dogs, all these dogs, although they have very different personalities, uh, very different, they shared a common theme. They shared a common theme. They were and are, in tracker sense, loyal. In fact, when I think of the word loyal, dogs come up in my head. They do. It didn't matter how unfaithful we were to the relationship to our dogs, lack of attention, time of walks, etc. These dogs, in our experience, were always loyal to their relationship with us. I'm sure they longed for that same loyalty from us, but whether they received it or not, they were loyal. I, there's been many times, many times where I know that I have not treated my dogs, don't say amen, family, with the best, all right? But they always give me their best. We can learn a lot from them. And I hate to even ask this question because it sounds so sacrilegious. But I'm going to ask it. Do we treat God like some of us treat our dogs? Do we treat God like some of us treat our dogs? Think about it. I want you to think about this question. We make sure that they're fed and watered. If we're good owners, we'll try to take them out for a walk every day. Try to brush them every day. Tracker mainly, like I said, lives outside. Because when he's inside, he's huge. If you've seen Tracker recently, he's huge. So even if he's not trying to make a mess, he's going to. Just his bigness of him, right? And so when he comes into my house, I'm afraid he's going to shake. I'm afraid his drool's going to go somewhere. I'm, I'm just, ah, it's too close to comfort for me. And no matter how good Tracker is to me, I'm still going to stand up here and testify I'm not as good to him. I'm not. I'm not as good to him. Do we treat God like our dog? Now, granted, I am sure there are some dog lovers in here, probably Michelle in here, who treat their dogs better than God. I, ho I, I hope you don't treat your dogs better than God. But maybe you give them more attention than you give God. I don't know, but ask that question. God is loyal to us. God is loyal to us. Are we loyal to him? God is loyal to us. Are we loyal to him? You know, he waited for consistent loyalty from the Israelites. Is he still waiting on loyalty from his modern-day Israelites? Are we loyal in our relationship with Jesus Christ? Or is he again longing for loyalty? Matthew 5.10, we heard it already this morning. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And to understand what this verse is asking of us, let's go back to verse 6 um, and what we learned about the word righteousness. So the, for those of you who are joining us new, we have been asking the question, what matters? In fact, if we didn't have our baptistry open, you would see the question, what matters? And we've been looking at um, the Beatitudes, because this is Jesus sharing with us this is God telling us what really matters. And we've been looking specifically at what matters to God. And so we, we learned back in Matthew um, 5, 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Now, what did we learn about the word righteousness? Does anyone remember when we are hungering and thirsting after righteousness, what are we really, what is God really asking us to hunger and thirst after? Does anyone remember? Relationship. Relationship. 
Righteousness is holiness, and we receive holiness through Christ. We, we are holy through our relationship with Christ. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst after, re, after a relationship. For then and only then shall you be satisfied. All right. So when you study this in context and in the original language, you find that this is what Jesus is meaning here in 5.10. We've already discussed 5.6, but this is what he's really saying with 5.10. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of loyalty to their relationship with Christ, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you study this, this is what this verse is actually saying. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of loyalty to their relationship with Christ. See, when we say stuff like righteousness, faithfulness, those are good words. But the problem is we've heard them so much and we don't really know what they mean. That we just let them go in one ear and out the other. This makes a whole lot of difference. This makes it real. So Jesus is saying to us from the Sermon on the Mount, what matters in this life, what matters to me is your loyalty to me and you will be persecuted for your loyalty to me. All right? Now that doesn't sound like a, a great promise. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, here in a minute. But he says, what matters to me is your loyalty to me. And yes, yes, when you are loyal to me, you will be persecuted. Let me ask you guys here today. Let me ask you. Here in North America, would you say the church is persecuted? Think about it, guys. If you're, if you're saying yes, then you probably need to go to a different country for a little bit. You probably need to go back in history a little bit. And I'm not saying that we're never persecuted here. But on the, at the big picture here. Is North America, are we going through the same persecution right now? No. Did you walk in here freely today? All right. Can you still open your Bible freely? Yes. Can you still worship on Saturday? Yes. And I'm not saying that as the world turns, it's not going to get worse. It will. But as of right now, no. No. So I'm going to ask the question, why are we not being persecuted? Especially when the Bible says the church will be persecuted because of its loyalty to me. The church will be persecuted because of its loyalty to me. Then why are we not being persecuted? One word. Loyalty. Loyalty. There is a lack of loyalty, my friends. You may not like to hear that. I didn't exactly like to read it. There's a lack of loyalty. We need to value our relationship with God above everything else in this world. We need to value our relationship with God more than anything else in this world. Amen? We need to be loyal to him as he is to us. And when we do this, when we do this, we, persecution will come. And the end of all this pain and misery will come. And I believe we are doing very poorly in the loyalty department. Now, how do I have a right to say that? You may be thinking, well, how do you have a right to say that? Well, like I like to say to my family all the time, proof is in the pudding. You may not know what that means. Ask your parents. If they don't, they can ask me after church. Proof is in the pudding. The word promises. So walk with me here now, okay? I'm going to go into my teacher mode, all right? Walk with me. The word promises that we, the church, the body of Christ, will be what if we're loyal to Christ? We will be persecuted. It's not, it's not a you may be. Let's look at some verses here on it. Okay, Matthew 5.10. Uh, Blessed are those who persecute. Okay, we already did that one. Luke 21.17. And everyone will hate you because of your allegiance to me. That's pretty clear. 
Everyone will hate you because of your allegiance to me. John 15, 21, the people of the world will hate you because you belong to me, because they don't know God who sent me. Here's another one that kind of tells us of our state. Mark 4, 17, but like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. At first they get along fine, but they wilt as soon as they have problems or are persecuted because they believe the world. Blessed are the persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So if we are not getting persecuted, if we are not getting persecuted, and it's a promise of our loyalty to Jesus, then that tells me it must be because the devil has nothing to worry about from us. We are so lukewarm, we're no threat. We're no threat. We just do the bare minimum. Now, I'm not indicating that we go around looking for persecution to prove that we're not lukewarm. Because let me just tell you something. If we are loyal in our relationship with Jesus, this will naturally, this will naturally not align us with the world. And the persecution will come to us. We won't have to look for it. You're going to find it in your own churches. God forbid you're going to find it here. God forbid you, you, you will find it. It will find you, I should say. It will find you. If you align yourself with Jesus Christ, persecution is going to find you. Look at this. This is from uh, the Mount of Blessings. Though his every word and act breathed of divine compassion. Please notice this, guys, okay? <laughs> Though his every word and act breathed of divine compassion. His unlikeness to the world provoked the bitterest hostility. Because he would give no license for the exercise of the evil passions of our natural nature... He aroused the fiercest opposition and enmity, enmity. So it is with all who will live godly in Christ Jesus. Just Jesus being Jesus. Just him being kind and compassionate. The bitterest. The fiercest. There it is. Our experience will be Christ's experience when we live, when he lived on this earth. When we align our, our loyalty to him. Through trials and persecution, the glory, the character of God is revealed in his chosen ones. The church of God, hated and persecuted by the world, are educated and disciplined in the school of Christ. Are we in the school of Christ? So again, the question is, are we being loyal to our relationship with Jesus? Or are we more loyal to our livelihoods? Are we more loyal to our families? Are we, may, are we more loyal to our safety? Are we more loyal to our money, our agenda, our schedule, our wants? Guys, it wasn't Jesus' rudeness. It wasn't his obnoxiousness that made people so angry with him. It was his kindness, his truth, his character. It made people mad. Have you ever had people just hate you because you're you? I have. When I was in high school, I happened to be making good decisions. I happened to, I got with a roommate that loved the Lord. She was teaching me to grow in the Lord. She was sharing Jesus with me, even though I grew up in a Christian home. I was making choices for Jesus. And because of that, my behavior was different than some of my other friends. They hated me for it. They'd come into the classroom. They would see that I was making better grades. And I was horrible at school when I first started my freshman year. I didn't know how to study because of my elementary school experience. 
And so I get there. I didn't know how to study. She was teaching me how to study. But as the years went by, my grades went up and up and up and up because of Jesus, 100%. And they, I, the girls would come to the classroom. They'd see I had an A on a paper. They would, just, they would just do this in the classroom and say, I hate her. I hate her. She always gets good grades. I hate her. And they would rip up my paper. And these supposedly were people who had been my good friends the year before, but because I was making different choices, I never condemned them. I never said, you guys better make better choices. I never condemned them for the things they were doing. I was just living my life. They hated me. And when you align yourself with Jesus and you start to change and you start to get healthy, please don't be surprised if people don't go, oh, so I'm so happy for you. Jesus was hated because of his kindness and his character. His presence forced the unhealthy to look at themselves. And in looking at themselves, they had to ask this question. They had a choice. Do I want to get well? Do I want to get well? Or do I want to attack, a blame, hate the one who's trying to show me a better way? Because I don't want to get healthy. It's going to be the same for us. Our presence alone, because if we're in Jesus Christ, it will convict other people. And they have a choice. Oh, man, I want that. I want that. How are you getting that? Show me Jesus. Or they'll say, oh, I hate you. You're weird. You're a fanatic. You're this. You're whatever. That's the choice. We've been doing an acronym uh, for all of you who are just joining us. Um, each, for each beatitude, so we'll remember what it's, what it's um, telling us or how we can accomplish this. And our, and our uh, word for today is loyal. And so this is going to break it down. How, how can we move forward and be loyal in our relationship with Jesus Christ? Well, this is so cool. Um, Loyal actually means, the word loyal, and you'll see it. If you will take this assignment and this week kind of look in different versions of the word loyal, sometimes it'll come across as loving kindness. Because loyal actually means loving kindness. When God shows his loyalty to us, he is showing us his loving kindness kindness. So you can, enter, you can exchange those words when you're reading in the scripture. It's really cool to do. When we are loyal to Jesus, we're showing him our loving kindness. Are there times, God, that you, you guys, that you just want to show God how much you love him? You just want him to hear in your heart how much you love him? You know, when we show loving kindness to God and we show loving kindness to one another, wow, does amazing things for our heart and soul and for his too. So loving kindness. Loyal means loving kindness. It's a covenant loyalty. Showing loyalty is showing loving kindness. Oh, obedience. Obedience. This is God's love language. I've studied it, man. And unfortunately, we've, we've kind of used obedience as a, as a bad word, obedient. It's a, it's a wonderful word. It's God's love language. He says, believe. He says, if you will believe what I say and do what I say, you are loving me. You are loving me. We love it when people love us and our love language. So if you want to show God you love him, believe what he says and then do what he says in faith. You. <laughs> this is all about you. Your loyalty relationship is about you. We, we're not loyal to God because our family was loyal before us. We're not loyal to God because our family made us go to church, and so we've gotten into a tradition of going to church, right? We're not loyal because, you know, so-and-so in our family is loyal. It's, it's about us. It's about us. Where in your relationship? Where does your relationship with Jesus, where does it rate? Where does it rate? Think about it. Pray about it. Are you loyal? Not is your spouse, 
Not is your parents, not are your kids, are you loyal? All. God is pleased when we show him that we value him above everything in the world. And this happens when we courageously, we remain faithful in opposition for our relationship with him's sake. All, all. He wants to be first. He wants all our loyalty, guys, not just on Sabbath morning. Thank you. Not just on Sabbath morning. He wants our loyalty. And you know what's so amazing about God? When we give him that, our lives are just better. Our lives are just better. Life. And what life, what this is saying is, not just for eternity, yes. As we are loyal to Jesus, we know what we're going to inherit. That Matthew 5.10 says it. Our verse says it today. But now... Now even, more abundant life now. Therefore, so far from causing grief, persecution should bring joy to the disciples of Christ. For it is an evidence that they are following in the steps of their master. Proverbs 21, 21 says, He who pursues righteousness, he who pers- pursues a relationship with me and loyalty and loving kindness finds life. Look it up. Proverbs 21, 21, right there. You who pursue loyalty and righteousness, you're going to find life. You don't know what your life's about. You don't know what God has in store for you. You don't know why you've been put on this earth. Look up Proverbs 21, 21. Pursue a relationship with Jesus Christ. You're going to start figuring out why he has put you in this time and place. My friends, as we look at this verse, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for momentary, light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Wow. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is eternal. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is eternal. Amen? Amen. It's eternal. It's not just for here and now. Jesus created relationships to last eternally. His desire, his delight, his longing for his children is to forever be in relationship with him. Forever to be in re- And not even with him, with each other. He wants us to be with each other forever. Forever. Eternal. He desires and delights in loyalty. He desires it. He delights in it. Hosea 6.6, 6, for I delight in loyalty rather than sacrifice and in knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. He desires it. He delights in it. He wants your loyalty. And remember that Matthew 5.10 says, it says, blessed are those who are persecuted. It doesn't say poor you, man. Man, it must stink for you. No, it says, blessed are those who are persecuted because of loyalty to me. Because you know why? Because you inherit the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is yours. This is good news. It's not scary news, guys. It's not fearful news. This is good news. When you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever is going on in this world, it shouldn't scare you. It shouldn't surprise you because you know where you're going and you know who you have walking beside you. This is good news. If you are called to go through the fiery furnace for his sake someday, 
Jesus will be by your side, even as he was with the faithful three in Babylon. Who You could not even smell the smoke on their clothes when they came out of the fiery furnace. Those who love their Redeemer will rejoice at every opportunity of sharing with him humiliation and reproach. Have you read the accounts of Paul and Silas as they were beaten in the open square unfairly because they were Roman citizens? They were put into prison. Their wounds were not, were not cleaned. And what are they doing? They're singing. They're in stocks. And they're singing. Guys, this is not humanly possible, but you know why they could sing? Because their eyes were focused on Jesus Christ, their relationship with Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit gave them that supernatural power. Satan can torture and kill the body, but he cannot touch the life that is hid with Jesus Christ. He can't. He can incar incarcerate in prison walls, but he can't bind your spirit. He can't take away your relationship. He can't take away your peace. He is loyal to us. Are we willing and wanting to be loyal to him? We are to imitate God. You know, Israel was to show kindness and faithfulness to the Lord, but they often failed. We read about it. In its youth, Israel showed faithfulness to God, um, but its devotion lagged. It was not constant, appearing and leaving as the morning mist. Even though God desired this from his people more than sacrifices, he looked for pious people who would perform deeds of piety, faithfulness, and kindness. The Lord desired people who would maintain covenant loyalty and responsibility so that he could build his righteous community. And guys, we do not do this in and of ourselves. See, what we do a lot is we take this message and we go, oh man, I got to be loyal. I got to be good. I got, no, you got to be nothing because you can't be nothing in and of yourself. The point is you need Jesus. The point is you need to be in relationship with Jesus. And he will give you the strength. He will do the good works through you. If you are sitting here today and you are thinking, well, man, eh, eh, you're thinking about yourself. It's selfish thinking. But if this is a freeing message, like, okay, man, God's going to give me the strength that I need. God's going to help me be loyal. I want to be loyal. Jesus, help me be loyal. Then your, your eyes are on Jesus. He wants to build his righteous community today. Today, he wants to build it. Not tomorrow. Today. This is his desire, my friends. And we can. We can. As we focus on his loyalty, on his loving kindness, we will be changed. We will become like him. But if you're just beholding him on Sabbath mornings, nothing is going to change in your life. Period. It will feel good. It will feel good for a few seconds. You're going to walk out that door. Satan's going to hit you with something. And you're going to forget everything that we've talked about here today. And I know it's true because you guys can't even remember the things that I'm asking you. It's true. Hey, what was it? Hey, guys, what did righteousness mean? Uh, right? We have to behold it. It's a relationship. If you take what I'm saying today and you walk out the door and you go, okay, God, me and you today, me and you today, and then the next day, me and you today, God, even if I don't feel like it, me and you today, you are going to change. And then Sabbath is just going to be a celebration of it. Sabbath isn't going to be your gorging day on dessert. It is going to be the beautiful satisfaction of a week spent with Jesus.
loyal and steadfast, proclaiming his character to the world. As we focus on this, as we focus on this, we will be changed. We will become like him. He is loyal to us, God. We want to be loyal to you. We want to be loyal to you. And we want it to start today. We want it to start today. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. I'm going to say it again. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Uh, my clicker is not working. Oh, there we go. All right. For his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to, the God, to God, the God of gods. For his loving kindness, kindness is, is everlasting. everlasting. To him who does great wonders. For his, For his loving, loving kindness, kindness is, is everlasting. everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord because he is the Lord of lords. For his, For loving, his loving kindness, kindness is, everlasting. is everlasting. To him who made the heavens with skill. For, For his, his loving, loving kindness, kindness is, is everlasting. To him who spread out the earth above the waters. For, For his, his loving, loving kindness, kindness is everlasting. To him who made the great lights. For his, For his loving, loving kindness, kindness is everlasting. And the sun to rule by day. For, For his, his loving, loving kindness, kindness is everlasting. The moon and stars to rule by night. For, For his, his loving, loving kindness, kindness is everlasting. Who remembered us in our lowly state. For, For his, his loving, loving kindness, kindness is, is everlasting. everlasting. And rescued us from our adversaries. For, For his, his loving, loving kindness, kindness is everlasting. Who gives food to all flesh. For, For his, his loving, loving kindness, kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of heaven. For his, For his loving, loving kindness, kindness endures forever. It is everlasting and everlasting. If you believe this, if you want to proclaim this, I want to ask that you will stand. I want to ask that you will stand. His loving kindness endures forever. Amen? Amen. And we didn't even do all of this psalm. His loving kindness, his loyalty, his loyalty lasts forever. It is everlasting. It is everlasting. I could never earn your heart. I could never reach that far. But you have pulled me close. You'll never let me go. I'm safe forever in your arms. Your promise is I cannot break And I know you will never change Your love is, your love is, your love is loyal Your love is, your love is, your love is loyal
Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. God, your love is, it is loyal, it is good, it is steadfast. Lord, like the beautiful animals that you have blessed us with, that no matter how we treat you, your love for us never changes. It never changes. Whether I ignore you one day or spend time with you the next day, your love for me never changes. It is constant. God, we praise you for your loyalty today. We praise you for your loving kindness today. Your lover, loving kindness is ever lasting everlasting and God we ask for forgiveness for where we don't believe it because our love is not everlasting the way we love each other is so conditional God the way we love is so conditional so God I pray that as we keep our eyes on you as we focus on you and allow you to fill our lives as we behold you you will teach us how to love unconditionally you will teach us how to be loyal, not just to you, but to everyone, to show loving kindness to everyone. God, this is what we want, and we want it starting today. We want to start starting today. And God, whether we feel like it or not, I pray that we will remind ourselves that you are loyal. You, your loving kindness lasts forever, and that means your loving kindness lasts forever forever. And we will walk in that and we will be changed by that. This is my prayer, God, for my life. This is my prayer for everyone here and for all those that we're going to come into contact with. May we be so loyal to you. May we be so loyal in our relationship with you that the world will know and the world will have to make a choice to believe and want what we want or to persecute. May we bring them to that choice by our lives in you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless. Happy Sabbath. Remember his loving kindness is everlasting. Tell it to yourself. Remind yourself. Have a beautiful Sabbath day. And we pray that we see you uh, tomorrow, if not before, for our season of lights. God bless. You'll never let me go. I'm safe forever in your arms Your promises I can't